Existent and dramatized will be the last pair. They're on their way forward together. That's it all in. Set. They're off. Racing for the King's Stand in the centre of the red of Highfield Princess was very sharp into her stride. Twilight Gleaming and Cool and Gatter on the extreme left and prominent. Happy Romance and Bradsell in prominent positions. Cannonball is nearest the grandstand side, leading there to Dramatized. Vadrim is with this one as well. And after best turned out, we're on the extreme right. Marshman and Mooniester just in behind the leaders to Desert Cop on the far side to Equilateral and Happy Romance and Rassel. Twilight Call is behind this existent to Towards the back of the field, Mitt Bar, he is being ridden along at this stage as well. Two furlongs to go, Highfield Princess and Bradsell, Cool and Gatter, and with those as well on the far side is Twilight Gleaming. Cannonball leads the near side with Vadrim and Dramatized as now Bradsell. Holly Dawn has gone on. In second position is Highfield Princess, who's gaining though. Bradsell has the lead. Highfield Princess, the red and yellows are half and fine in second place, but Bradsell and Holly Dawn have won the King's stand to Highfield Princess and Annette and Twilight cause an equilateral Russell and Marshman and then came Desert Cop. Another breathtaking finish to a Royal Ascot race and it is the queen of racing, Holly Doyle, who comes out on top on Bradson, narrowly beaten in the Coventry. They go one better here, beating the queen of the north and the sprinters, Highfield Princess. Kevin, what a finish. Oh, Archie Watson and Holly Doyle get their compensation, Alex, but I don't think it will be official just yet. Drifted I think the, the winner has definitely drifted to her left. Now there's almost a length in it, so... We know from the way British racing is stewarded, she'll be she'll be heavy odds on to keep it, but they will. I'd be shocked if they don't have a good look. But I think they might be okay. We'll see the head on in the minute. Here we go. We'll see where they start and where they end up. I think we saw a horse go all the way across the track last year and keep the race. <laughs> That's a very fair point, Alex. <laughs> they, are, they are slow, but look, there was something in it. Um, you know, I, don't, I don't think there was... Well, we'll see how it pans out here. Look, Highfield Princess, how game was she? She was coming back. Bradsell starts to go. Holly had pulled her whip through, though, in anticipation, it oh, seems to me, Kevin. That's you... right on top of the line. Look, I don't think there's a riding offence, but there certainly is interference. You know, did the winner improve her, um, his position uh, via the interference? I think you'd have to, you know, you could say that. Who'd be yeah. a steward, Fred? No, uh, I, look, I, I can't see it being turned over, to be honest. Uh, there was interference, sure. Uh, Highland, Highfield Princess was taken off her line as well, but it, it, to me there wasn't enough to be, uh, you know, uh, turning this result around. What a what a uh, training performance by Archie Watson and his team to get this Coventry win off last year. Back on track, first time over five furlongs. Highfield Princess now is one from five here at Ascot. And interestingly enough, Bradsell, of course, as a three-year-old, Jamie got a, quite a hefty weight for age allowance from the runner-up. Yes, uh, and that way has been significant yeah. for Bradsell. And, um, yeah, I mean, this is very interesting now, this, this final furlong, and the head-on is critical because Highfield Princess was gaining about half length down and a scene from the side on that was pushed to one side. So this is in the balance. Don't um, count your chickens just yet. But let's just deal with Bradsell for a second. How good is this training performance by mm. Archie Watson for a Coventry winner to then suffer a setback Miss the whole of the second half of last season. And might be slightly delayed, but we have heard the bing bong and a steward's inquiry has just been called, as you were, Jamie. Yes, so then to have two runs back and recalibrate and then supplement this horse into a group one, <laughs> that all of that is, 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 is top-level training. It, it's extremely punchy campaigning, Lynchy, because, of course, look, the obvious option for this horse was the Commonwealth Cup against his own age group. You know, so to come in against the big boys, the big girls, open company, international competition... Big call, big call, and look, he's got it. He's got it very right. Uh, but let's see what the stewards say, uh, because the perverse thing about this inquiry, Alex, and the way British racing is stewarded, is you're, you're almost incentivized to cause as much interference as you can because if the winning margin is, is long you know the stewards are very reluctant to reverse like I think the very worst of the interference was right on top of the line so I don't think you can give that much weight it's what happened it's what happened in the final 100 yards and look connection to the second would say look we were denied our fair opportunity to fully open up and go get the winner and they'll go in and make their case but look I think all of us from watching these inquiries over the years from knowing that the aggressor is favoured 
especially when you're dealing with you know almost approaching a length that um, I'll get the prices up here but I, I suspect the winner will be heavy odds on to keep but they'll have a good look at it. Yeah Kevin you've been very vocal along those lines over the last couple of years with these um, these incidents of interference but Holly to me looked like she did absolutely everything she could to try and keep this horse straight but yeah they definitely have drifted across there as she comes back in under the Longine arc and Oh, 1.1 to keep the race, Kevin. 10 to 1 on. <laughs> yeah, that is that, that is a reflection of how the game is short in this country. And yeah. um, I disagree, plenty will, but th those are the rules and this result will be decided based on the rules and the way they are commonly interpreted in this country. But the well. second uh, might feel a little bit sour about that. You could do, but that them's the rules, as they say. Them's the rules. 14 to 1, Bradsell. What a bold move to supplement this horse into the race. Highfield Princess, a 7 to 4 favourite, just defeated. Second past the post. And look at that. A naff in third at 50 to 1. The revival of the Mick Appleby team. They are a yard to follow at present. And you can see as they come back into a fanfare here. Nearly 10 to 4, according to the official sponsors, Longines, as they come back from this King Stand stakes. And brilliant result for Holly Doyle, who will be stating her case in the stewards' room after this. But all smiles at present, being led in by the winning connections. And what a, a brilliant result, Jamie, for Archie Watson, who suffered a cruel defeat in this, uh, this meeting in the past. Yes, of course. Remember the Commonwealth Cup? which he was first past the post, but then Campanelle got it in the stewards' room, so he's been on the reversal end of one steward's decision. Long odds on to keep the race. And regardless of the result, Highfield Princess is a sensational mare, isn't she? Oh. To run like that She was coming again. back too, wasn't she? And she, she was, was terrier-like, fighting back. Bradsell went past her by a length and a half, but then her spirit and her stamina really kicked in. And for her to fight back as she did, I'm sure that she's going to have an equally successful rest of the summer as she did last year. Yeah, it's wonderful to see. And Holly Doyle, providing she keeps this race, of course, will have won her fourth race at Royal Ascot, which makes her, of course, the most successful female rider at the meeting and having a real tussle there with Jason Hart on the brilliantly game Highfield Princess. It's great to see her in training and as good, if not better than ever. What an exciting season she has still to come. But Bradsell justifying Connection's decision to dig deep to put him into this race and he comes home in front in the King's stand here at Ascot.